The Old Testament reading comes from Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 to 10, and that can be found on page 698 in the Old Testament. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms, to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. The New Testament reading is from Luke chapter 2, verses 41 to 52, and that can be found on page 59 of the New Testament. Now every year his parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of Passover, and when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went a day's journey. Then they started to look for him among their, their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And when all who heard him were amazed at his, at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished and his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. He said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. The epistle reading comes from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 to 3. And that's on page 240 of the New Testament. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know, uh, know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Word of God for the people of God. God. Would you pray with me? Lord God, empty me of me and fill me with you <clears throat> so that the words of my mouth are only yours spoken through me. And Lord, open the ears of the hearers here today that they may hear what it is and listen to what you are calling them to take into the world and into their lives. We pray this in your precious name. Amen. While I was at the men's lunch this week, I heard someone talk about how not just pastors are called to specific places. We are all called to different things and places. Such wise words, thank you, Ed West. Yet when a large church recently asked its members what they thought a calling was, the responses were all over the map. The church felt that it was so critical that the congregants understood this word that they dedicated a summer-long sermon series to helping their congregants understand it. 
Grasping the meaning of this word calling is often difficult and is made especially confusing when we see ministers misuse the word. Congregants take note when ministers are called unexpectedly from their current ministries. And they are called towards another, another ministry that happens to have a larger package offered to them. The reality is, as Ed so wisely said, we are, we are all called to something, to some place. Sometimes we have a clear vision of what that calling is, and other times we don't. However, we, when we are called, what matters is our response. In the only story we have of Jesus as a teenager, we see that even at the turbulent age of 12, Jesus heard his calling. What we learn from this amazing teenager is how to respond to God's call on our lives. Now, first off, as I mentioned, it says Jesus was 12 years old when this occurred. Now, let us think about what it's like to be a 12-year-old. In this developmental stage, which I have been living with for almost an entire year, she's going to be 13 in two weeks. <laughs> but we can expect many things. Physical changes. Oh, when their emotions are all over the place. But interestingly enough, it's also a time when kids start to find their leadership skills. And they become more understanding of this idea of giving back to their community. It's a time when they begin seeking their independence, but also still seek parental approval. It's a time when their moral values are beginning to become more developed. It's a time when abstract thinking, problem solving, and logic are all becoming easier. So knowing this, it makes sense that Jesus is this age when he first recognizes his call and subsequently responds the way he does. Up until this point, all signs of Jesus' call have come through others. The angels, and Mary, Elizabeth, Zachariah, the shepherds, Simon and Anna, and others. But now here, Jesus is claiming his calling himself. Now some of you might say, but how is Jesus claiming his calling here? Well, in his book, The Spiritual Exercises, Louis Savory explains it well. Savory had talked about when he traveled to Jerusalem to explore the usual Holy Land tours, that he had an Aramaic-speaking Palestinian guide whom he conversed with and who explained to him that Jesus' responsive phrase, did you not know that I would be in my father's house? And other varying similar translations don't quite get it right. What it means is more like, I heard my father call my name, and how could I not respond? This reveals three things. The fact that Jesus received his divine calling. That he knows who his true father is, and that he has responded to his father's call with a resounding yes. Jesus was not the rebellious teenager, nor was he the child prodigy in theology that sought to show off in front of his teachers. He was a young person who had heard an unmistakably overpowering divine call and responded to it. Not every one of us has the opportunity to have a such unmistakable overpowering divine call as Jesus experienced Perhaps we could say that Jesus' call is vital to all future callings by God. So how do we know what our calling is if it isn't unmistakably been revealed to us? Well, there are several ways that we can identify our divine calling. We start by asking ourselves some questions. Where and when did you ever feel fully alive? And what were you doing at that time? 
In what context are you able to both give and receive life and love? How are you hurt and then healed of that hurt? Do you want to heal people who have been hurt as you were? Are there things you feel you must do, things that you must be about, no matter how difficult, how exhausting, or unrewarding it might be? Wherever you are giving and receiving life and love is where God is calling you to. Jesus was called in the temple a place that he would later be condemned. But the temple for Jesus, a practicing Jew, was where his father's being was most strongly present. The temple was where Jesus was receiving life and love. The temple in that moment is where Jesus was first called by God to share his unearthly knowledge. Jesus' call was to redeem us. When Jesus accepted this call, it meant that all future calls were a response to this redemption and to work to further God's kingdom here on earth. In other words, our call doesn't lead to redemption, but pursuing our call is a response to that redemption that we already received. The redemption that allows us to rest in Christ's finished work, like I mentioned a few weeks ago. Another thing that we learn from this passage is displayed in Mary and Joseph's reaction to Jesus answering his call. In this passage, we witness Mary and presumably Joseph getting frustrated by Jesus' answering his call on his life because it gave them anxiety. They seem to have, at least in the moment, forgotten all the messages that they were given about Jesus' calling since birth. When we respond with a yes, to God's calling on our lives, then it can often upset some people in our lives as well. A good example of this is a man named Judson. When he graduated from college and seminary, he received a call from a very fashionable church in Boston to become its associate pastor. Everyone was congratulating him. His mother and sister were excited because he could live at home and do this work and life work with them. But Judson shook his head. My work is not here, he said. God is calling me beyond the seas to stay here, even to serve God in this ministry, I feel would be only partial obedience. And I could not be fulfilled or happy in that. So although it cost him a great struggle, he left the mother and sister and followed his call. And Judson's churches in Burma have had more than 50,000 converts. The influence of his consecrated life, the influence of him carrying out his calling is felt around the world. If Judson hadn't responded with a yes, then there might have never been 50,000 or more Christians in Burma. Jesus' response is a yes to his calling. And if we look closer, we'll recognize that Jesus in this passage actually has multiple callings. First is that of the new life and ministry. But second is the calling to be an obedient child. You see, Jesus knew that he was called to be an example, which meant being obedient to both his earthly and heavenly parents, even to the point of death. We at any given time may have multiple calls on our lives, and although we don't see it in this passage here, we do in other scriptures, we are also corporately called. Our church's mission and vision statement reminds us that we are called to be the voice and hands of God in our community and to be the beacon on the hill that shines Christ's light for all to see. We are called in different ways and to different things. But the important point to take from this passage is our response to that call, which should be a resounding yes, despite what all others may think. Now there's a gentleman by the name of 
Timothy Stackpole, who knew what it meant to be called to something and say yes despite what anyone thought. Timothy was a New York City firefighter and he was severely burned in a 1998 fire. And after he recovered, he turned to the for returned to the force despite the advice of family and friends and the fact that he could retire comfortably. And he was a great firefighter and so quickly he was promoted to captain. Timothy was one of the firefighters that ran into the second tower to try to save some people. When he did, it collapsed and took his life. He knew his calling was to save people and he answered yes, despite what others thought. He answered yes, even if that cost him his life. Are we willing to listen and answer yes to God's call on our lives? Are we willing to say yes despite the costs? Now, if you're like me, you're more likely to be like Jeremiah, who hears a call but questions if it's really for them, then out of fear gives a little bit of pushback to God. If you're like me, you're more apt to push off God's call until it's more convenient or the timing is right. But God is relentless and will continue to tug at your heart until we respond. What will be your response when God calls you to a new thing? What is your response to God's call to be the voice and hands of God and the beacon on the hill? Will you be like Jesus and respond yes by taking action despite the emotional and physical costs? Let us remember that when we are called, we must listen, recognize, and respond with a yes, Lord even if the cost seems so high. For when we do this, we will successfully share Christ's love with the world. Hallelujah. Amen.